Hey guys, it's been a while. I uh, just want to put together a quick video about uh, an issue I see every single day on Holly Terminator X systems. Um, this is a big problem for a lot of people, and I don't know why exactly this happens, but I've come up with a pretty uh, simple way to, eh, it, it's a workaround, but makes it not cause you an issue. And what we're talking about here is your closed loop fuel correction kicking in when the car first starts, even though the sensor, the wideband sensor is not really reading anything yet. And it shows full pegged lean at 36 and it'll go ahead and kick into closed loop correction and dump fuel until the engine floods. Uh, usually the car will stall or it'll start swinging around or at the very least, it's just dumping fuel like crazy on the plugs and it shouldn't happen. Um, OEM calibrations, would often give you either control over the oxygen sensor heating mechanism directly, or uh, at the very least, they give you some, some time-based delays since the car's been started uh, to prevent closed loop from kicking in when the sensor's not up to a proper temp and ready to read accurately uh, so that you, know, you don't get these false corrections. So anyways, in, in the Holly world, the way that the closed loop correction works is you, you turn this on, you have a couple basic controls here over when uh, closed loop should be allowed to kick on. A lot of times if you have like a small cam or a stock cam, uh, real simple combos, there's really no reason to keep closed loop off ever, in my opinion. Uh, you could have it at idle, cruise, full throttle, um, you know, really any condition at all, even at cold temperatures, once the sensor is warmed up. But because we don't control the sensors warming up uh, in this particular EFI system, we have to go to something else. So here's what we do. These are your limits. This is the maximum amount of compensation allowed uh, for this system once it does kick in. So for a given uh, map pressure and for a given RPM, you basically get a plus or minus. So within this particular area, 875 to 1750 RPMs, 118 to 158 KPA as this example shows, uh, it's allowed to add up to 50% fuel, which is why there's a plus here, and it can remove 50% fuel. And most of the time in my tunes, I'll have just a, a single number, whatever it might be, 25, 20, 10, whatever it's gonna be. And I'll just make the whole map that way, uh, at least initially. Okay, so here's what you need to do. This trick that I'm gonna show you uses an advanced table. So the first thing you need to do is add advanced uh, ICF into your tune. So you go to the toolbox, add individual config, and just pick the default advanced. And now you'll have this extra icon up here. So we'll go to that. We'll go to a one dimensional table and we're going to turn on the, the first table. For your X axis here, this is gonna be based on time. So we will choose time in the drop down list. And for what we're trying to modify here, you notice that there is a CL comp plus limit override. And we don't need to mess with the minus to do this. This is only going to be a plus issue because remember, when this, this problem occurs with the Holly, the issue is that it thinks it's going to be lean, so it adds fuel. So you're trying to prevent it from adding so much. Okay, so we're going to do the CL compensation plus limit override based on time. Now, this is really important. When you go key on with, with the Holly, as soon as the ECU has power, even if the car's not started, your advanced tables, if they're turned on here, they will go into effect immediately, unless you use some kind of activation parameters that prevent it from kicking in right away. So what we need to do is we wanna make sure that our, our little timer here that we're gonna use starts when the car starts. So the easy way to do that is go back over to your spark and go to your cranking parameters and whatever RPM you have set from crank to run, uh, in this case, this is just a can tune from Holly. It's 400 RPMs, but whatever this number is, 400 RPMs, go back to your advanced table and do an advanced enable when RPMs are above whatever that number is. Because if you make it above 400, that's the moment the car becomes operating, and that's when this table goes into effect. So if you think about things on a scale of time, zero seconds will be the moment you cross 400 RPMs and you should never fall below 400 while the car's running, so you're good there. Now, this issue that I see with the Hollies, usually when it happens, it'll, it'll just snap out of it and go back to normal within 
oh, anywhere from probably 10 to 20 seconds, usually not longer than that. If you're experiencing the issue, you need to figure out how long this occurs before it starts actually reading valid values. But let's say it's 20 seconds. So what I would do here is I would make a map that makes the time axis start at zero, go up to 20, and fill row values so they're just evenly distributed. And remember, this is an override of the maximum allowed of compensation. So if these numbers here are at zero, that means it's not allowed to add fuel at all. Um, so what I'm thinking here is maybe what we do, and in fact, let's, let's change this up a little bit more. Let's make the one before the end set to 20 seconds, and then we'll do another 10 seconds on top of that. And let me fill this in again. Okay, so got all these little marks here, and then the one here. Really, all we should have to do is change the last one. So you got 20 seconds of no compensation permitted, and then it'll start to slowly allow more and more compensation over time. And the reason you don't want it to just instantly go to full compensation is because it, if, if there's actual compensation needed, it could have kind of a freak out when it first kicks in all at once and you go from no comp to a whole bunch of fuel getting added and it might cause some other issues, even if the, the correction is somewhat needed, uh, might have some issues. So do something like this where your, your time up to whatever you think is not going to cause you issues, get this all you know flattened out, make sure all your values there are zero, and then give it some kind of a ramp time, maybe 5, 10, 20 seconds after that where it goes back up to whatever your intended uh, closed loop compensation limit is. Now, um, going back to the stock logic in Holly, you know, yes, technically you can have different compensation limits at different pressures and RPMs, as we mentioned earlier. So whenever you use this trick in the advanced table to override the limit, it basically is going to override the, the plus side of this entire table. Uh, there's really no way around that. So if you really think you need to have, you know, unique uh, compensation amounts throughout this map, then this technique, I guess, won't, won't technically work very well for you. Now, a slightly different way you could do this is instead of doing a one-dimensional table, you could go into a two-dimensional table. The value type is the same thing, CL comp override. Your x-axis is still gonna be based on time. We'll put in our 20 seconds and 30 seconds. Fill the row values. But now you can use the other axis to do something based either on most likely RPM uh, or your map sensor. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use RPM for this example. And I'll put a, you know, put 7,000 RPMs here. Smooth that out across there, fill column values. Uh, and so now we can, we can kind of have the same sort of control. So the idea is that all the numbers should be zero still all the way up to 20 seconds. But instead of then at 30 seconds, everything going up to whatever your number is, you can base it on something like RPM. So maybe, you know, at higher throttle, maybe uh, let's say like 4,200 RPMs and above, maybe we want to have it, you know, allowed to make really big adjustments. But then as we taper back down to idle, uh, maybe we don't, maybe we don't need any. So we could fill that down and blend that back to zero also. Um, so th this is not perfect guys, but, um, Usually, honestly, just the, the simple 1D table like this will prevent that from happening. What you might even do also is, you know, a lot of people don't even have this problem. And I don't know why some do and some don't. It's not a tuning problem. I don't think it's the sensor itself. I, I don't know. But if it happens to you sometimes, but not all the time, you might even try, instead of going straight to zero, maybe something really low, like 4 or 5%. The truth is if the sensor freaks out and it adds 5% fuel, it's not that it's not the end of the world, uh, but at least it gives it some opportunity to do some minor closed loop correction if it's actually needed. Um, or if you're really paranoid about it, just set it to zero. Uh, and yes, the truth is, if your tune's dialed in, uh, you shouldn't need the closed loop comp here anyways. You can get all your temp modifiers and startup and everything else dialed in. But, um, you know, tunes are never perfect. There's always going to be some amount of compensation day to day as things change. Um, so tune's never perfect, but this simple approach should work pretty well for, for most of you guys. So uh, if you're experiencing this issue where you, you first start the car and you immediately see the AFR go to 36 and it starts dumping fuel on you, this will solve your problem. Good luck. Godspeed.